So a lot of you see me use these range finders. This is the Leupold RX1200i TBR. Uh, I, I want to talk to you about something that a lot of people overlook with a range finder. And part of that's based on how it works. This beam comes out of here. It's actually pulses. And it's coming at three to 600 pulses per second. And it goes down, it hits uh, its target, and then it comes back and all of the mechanisms in here read how long did it go, take it to go down and come back and it does the calculation of that's the range. Well, <clears throat> one thing, especially in bright light conditions, that some of the lower end uh, range finders will have a problem with is the color of your target. And I know some of you are gonna say, what? So I'm gonna try to simplify this uh, without, I'm not an engineer, but I've talked to a lot of optics engineers and they've shown me on some of the lower end range finders how this problem really does exist. So Leupold has it built into their range finder that compensates for what I'm gonna tell you. But think about white light. Think, uh, and I'm gonna show you here how how this applies. We've got a target down here that Matthew's holding. Half of it is just stark white, half of it is jet black. If you hit light on an object that is white, it comes back with a very strong signal. We all know that, right? White reflects, black absorbs. If you hit a target at the same distance, black absorbs the light. So when it comes back, it comes back at a much weaker pulse. Well, some of the lower end rangefinders can't distinguish that difference, so they think that the black object is much further away because the pulse that's coming back is much weaker. Or they think the white object is far closer because it's coming back with a stronger signal. So I'm doing this in the morning. I'd be best to do it with the absolute brightest light of the day. But it's worthwhile if you have a rangefinder go and do this exercise. So I'm gonna range this. And I'm hoping I, I get less than a tenth of a foot difference at this range. Okay, I got 52.1 on the white side. And 50, it's bouncing 52.1, 52.2 on the black side. So I knew that would happen with this rangefinder because I've done it before. And the fact that Leupold, they compensate for this inside their rangefinders. But a lot don't. So think about if you're on a really bright day and your object is a mountain goat or there's a lot of snow reflection or other stuff, you're gonna get a much different range in a, one, of, one of these uh, range finders that don't accommodate or, or compensate for this compared to low light conditions or maybe your target is black, like a black bear. My point is go and figure this out before you get in the field. Do it at home like I'm doing right now because the time to figure this out is not the moment of truth when, oh, gee, I don't really want to shoot that animal, but it's not giving me a proper reading. And some of these lower end range finders, uh, the, one, the ones that we've experimented with, will give you anywhere from a five to 10% different reading on the same exact target at the same exact distance when you hit the white side versus the black side. And so people are like, well, what's a five to 10% difference? Let's say it's an 8% difference, all right? That means that if you're archery hunting and 8% difference on a 50 yard target, one side might say, oh, it's 50 yards. The other side might say it's 54. I guess to be a pretty decent difference. If the target's 400 yards out there, 8% of 400 is 32. So your your reading might be 430 instead of 400 but your rangefinder is telling you it's 400 or just vice versa so i always get a quality rangefinder and when you do come out and just do these little experiments you can do them in your backyard and it'll tell you if it's doing what it's supposed to do thanks for watching